Hello and welcome to another edition of the Ask Dr. Pikel Show. And today we want to talk about the stages of Hashimoto's. Um, many patients that come to our office uh, for thyroid issues, uh, sometimes they've already been diagnosed with Hashimoto's, sometimes they haven't. It's, it's definitely variable, but then when we get into um, Hashimoto's or autoimmune thyroid issues, then we've got to find out, you know, what stage are they in? So that's what we're going to get into are the three stages of um, Hashimoto's. All right. So um, many people um, will uh, have Hashimoto's and, of course, not know it. And, you know, in this stage one of, of Hashimoto's um, is what we call silent autoimmunity. And this means really at this point, uh, if you if we tested you or if another doctor's tested you uh, via blood test, we're going to find these elevated antibodies, either TPO antibodies, thyroglobulin antibodies, or both. And those, those antibodies may be elevated, but at this point, you have no symptoms. You're not feeling bad. In fact, most people would never even get this tested. Doctors aren't going to test this usually unless you have symptoms. And at this point too, there's no, there's no tissue damage. And then if they look at your thyroid hormones, uh, mainly your TSH is what's going to be looked at. They're going to say, Hey, it's normal. Um, so, uh, again, at this point, most people are not getting uh, diagnosed. Most people are not even being looked at and most people don't even know they have an issue. Then in stage two, here we have autoimmune reactivity. Now it's starting to advance a little in stage two. Yeah, we still have the elevated thyroid antibodies, TPO, thyroglobulin, maybe even both. Um, now at this point, yeah, we find out because we're starting to get thyroid symptoms. Maybe we're getting some hair loss or some uh, weight gain or low energy or constipation. Things are starting to slow down in the body skin issues, facial edema. Um, so yeah, now at this point also, we may be starting to get some tissue inflammation, meaning the thyroid tissues starting to become a little more inflamed. Maybe you feel a little swelling in your throat sometimes, or maybe you're a little tender to touch in that area. But still at this point, the TSH is usually within the normal reference range, uh, even at this point auto it's it's again these very beginnings and then in stage three this is where we have the true autoimmune disease the hash this is where usually most doctors are going to diagnose hashimoto's thyroiditis um and uh this is where again still uh you know these antibodies are elevated also now, of course, having symptoms and not only symptoms, but increased symptoms, more regular, uh, more pronounced symptoms, definitely. And then at this point, also, we're getting measurable tissue damage where if an ultrasound on the thyroid is done, we may see damage to the thyroid, may even see nodules on the thyroid. That thyroid gland is being attacked on a regular uh, daily basis. And then usually what we'll see then is this um, elevated TSH um, on this. And, and that's the, the problem is a lot of times doctors are waiting for that, uh, that TSH number to um, become elevated before anything is, is really um, done. So now another point to add in here is elevate, even though these are kind of the guidelines not everybody fits in the guidelines because oftentimes that TSH number with Hashimoto's can go up and can go down. It can roller coaster. In fact, it can fall really low. And then the doctor says, Hey, you've got too much thyroid hormone. Let's take some away. And then it goes high and they say, Oh, uh, not enough. Let's add some. And it becomes this game of trying to manage the TSH number when that's not what it's about. We already know with Hashimoto's that TSH is going to roller coaster and it's not really an accurate number in advanced in advanced Hashimoto's or autoimmune thyroid issues. So we've got to kind of almost ignore it and actually look at the thyroid hormones. What does T4 look like? What does T3 look like? You know, do you have enough hormone in your system? Because also it's important to understand that this is not a thyroid hormone problem as much as it is a 
an immune system problem. This is the immune system attacking the thyroid. So the key is to find out what is triggering your immune system, what's causing your immune system to attack your thyroid. Otherwise, it just becomes kind of a road to, to nowhere, a road of just, hey, take your thyroid hormone. And then if it, you know, if you continue to complain of other symptoms, we'll give you this medication, that medication, or even if you keep complaining, here's your antidepressant. Um, so again, that's not the road we want to go down. The road we want to go down is to find out what is tr what's causing the immune system reactivity um, and, and leading to this disease process. So, and, and if you'll notice the difference in the stages, again, we have the um, normal TSH, normal TSH, elevated TSH, and it's kind of comparing and contrasting these and then seeing, you know, what, what needs to be uh, done at that point. All right. Well, hopefully uh, everybody got some great information out of this. Um, I would say one more thing with this too, is a lot of times um, if we find that a patient has an issue uh, like they're in stage three or even in stage two, then we'll oftentimes want to talk about family members also because uh, they could be in that silent autoimmunity stage. And sometimes it's good for them to also go and get their thyroid antibodies checked so they can catch this early. That's the, the biggest key is, is prevention. If you, the earlier you can catch this issue, the more headway you can make and, of course, avoid destructive processes uh, that can occur with autoimmune conditions. All right. Well, um, everybody have a wonderful day. God bless. And we'll see you next time.